This video is supported by Rocket Railways Reclaimed for all the spares you need for your model railway. Please click the link in the description below. Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall. We're returning to the Wills kit build here this week and I want to move it on and try and get as much of the additional detailing added um, and possibly even the roof too. So let's see how we get on. Since I last spoke to you I have done a couple more things to the building more in a, uh, so that we can step it on a little bit and get on to the next stages and um, everything that I have done has already been covered in the previous two videos. First up we have the two chimney uh, stacks have been installed it's again just simply cutting out sheets of plastic mitering the edges and gluing them into place with the addition of a couple of little extra struts for support. I have added an additional window onto the gable end. It's not part of the original plans, but I did feel that it just added a little something to that gable wall. And also I have filled in, particularly along this edge here, and a couple of bits up on the chimney, just with a wee drop of filler um, in readiness for painting, which will come after this next stage. So what we're going to look at before we get to the painting stage is we need to install the window sills on each of the windows and also the lintels above those windows. Um, what we're going to use for that is perfectly provided by the kit and it's these white sections here and we just need to trim one of those off, sand off the wee burrs at the bottom and then we can glue with just a wee drop of normal contact or even your, um, your plastic weld and glue one of these into place and if the if your um, measurements have been good in terms of cutting your window portal you should have a nice overlap either side of the window for that lintel to sit And it's a good practice just to do this before the painting of the brick. Um, well, one it just makes it a little bit easier to glue into place um, as you would have to use a super glue or uh, something like Yoohoo afterwards if you were to glue onto the paint. So that'll get repeated across the rest of these windows plus the gable. I will have to use a different one on these windows here as the gap between the top of the window and the bottom of the roof is just too narrow to work with these lintels. This being a smaller house I'll probably repeat the same process for these bottom ones, make them a little bit plainer looking than these more decorative ones here. Once those uh, lintels are all done we can add the window sills and the window sills come from the other strip of accessories in the pack and that's these long rectangular strips here and they need to be cut down to the relevant size to suit your window. Now all my windows are identical in width except for these ones here in the smaller house um, but in some cases you do have smaller windows um, on the rear, particularly whenever you're building the full structure um, on the rear of the building there can be little sort of toilet windows in that that tend to be a bit smaller so they just need to be cut to an appropriate length um, probably something similar to what the lintel is above and I'm just going to mark it here and cut and then they'll get glued in in exactly the same way and it's this exact same piece that I will use for the lintels on the little building to the right and I'll do that on all four of those windows plus the door. Now in terms of the uh, openings for the shop they don't have any lintels as such there will be signage that will go directly above this which will disguise the brickwork. So I'll crack on, get those all glued into place and then we can come back and at that point I'm going to start the painting. Now I've covered painting application on brick in previous videos so I'll not go into too much detail on that. We'll just fire through it and get it done and get ready for the next stage. <laughs>
Okay, painting all done and hopefully you followed the uh, little montage there of the process that I went through. In addition to that, I've also painted the window sills and the, the moulding above each of the windows. On the shops, I've gone with a little bit more flair, adding a bit of colour. Perhaps it's painted, perhaps it's sandstone, not entirely sure. And then the little house next door to it is much more basic and a grey, which sort of denotes concrete cement that sort of thing and these will get weathered down at the end along with the rest of the build one other little thing with regards to the painting uh, something that works very well on these wills sheets is by taking a bit of sandpaper this is 800 grit sandpaper by just giving a little rub across the brickwork it helps highlight even more some of the bricks on the, the building uh, maybe not as clear to see on the front there at the minute I haven't really done it but if you look at the side there you can see some of the bricks are really beginning to stand out and it's just the way the plastic molding is done in that there are those bricks that sit a little bit more further forward and you can really pick those out so I'll do that off, uh, off camera next we want to fit the windows and it's basically as simple as going to the window fret that you have in your pack and picking out the correct size ones a couple of them do come uh, with the uh, the window the sash window in the open position you can use them if you wish or just keep them all closed there generally is enough windows that there is one or two spare come the end and certainly in the case of this build there was enough to cover both sets of windows for both buildings so I have these already primed and then painted and you could sh should be able to see there in the reflection of the light that they're also glazed and it's nearly you know it's, it's almost good practice to do that before you um, put them into place it does make it an awful lot easier so on this building here they're going to be white on the main building they're going to be uh, painted in a green and it's very much just a case of setting them up in behind the window aperture and cutting them or gluing them into place either with a rocket card or sorry with a, um, a plastic weld or a contact adhesive now in the case of this building here you can see that a little bit of it protrudes over the top so i will need to trim that before they get glued into place same goes for the door um, or doors the doors on the the fret are either a nice ornate door for the front or a very plain one for the back uh, i'm not entirely sure actually i must look into the pack there and see what the situation is for the shops but we'll come back to that at a later date okay i'm going to go and get these glued into place and then we'll move on to fitting the roof now let's take a look at the fitting of the roof of the building probably the most complex part of in terms of cutting and more so in my case because of the odd angles of the gable walls if you were following the plan uh, the, the kit to the letter of the plans and instructions you'd be able to use the template that's supplied with uh with the pack unfortunately obviously i can't do that because of these funny shapes so i need to create my own template and i'm just going to use some stiff card similar to what i did whenever i was marking out the uh, outline for the walls the uh, the walls of the building so what i'm going to do is i've got a piece of card that's just slightly bigger than the the overall length of the the, the slope of the the roof and if i uh lay it on the bottom edge of this wall here ensuring that i have enough space overhanging on this side because the wall's sloping out that way so this end here is going to be a little higher up so we'll over uh over compensate for that and i'm just going to mark a line here on the outer edge which gives me a slight overhang on this edge of the wall i can then cut that piece of card to size to make it easier to work with Now, with that there, if I lay it on now at the base of the chimney, uh, I've got just the slight overhang on this side and I want to mark the outside edge 
of this chimney stack here and the same on this one here now i also need to note with this one here it's slanting away in that direction so in actual fact the cut on this side will be approximately there with the further cut down here giving me that slope away i hope that makes sense now on this side here i want to gauge roughly sort of the midpoint of the chimney whenever the 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 card is sloped in the correct angle so it's about that mark there so if i mark it just at the bottom edge of the chimney there i now should have a square in which i can cut my chimney And that will be the same on this side here. But again, the chimney angles uh, in this direction slightly. So I need to ensure on this one here that I'm cutting it at a slight angle. Okay, cut's made. We'll offer it up to the building and see how accurate we are. Well, we're already I can see that on this side here, um, my allowance for the, uh, the, the, the the chimney is well off. You know, in all honesty, I probably should be using a set of calipers or something like this to do it properly. But where's the fun in that whenever you can do it all by eye? Again, we'll offer it up. Now that's looking much closer now and um, it's sloping round we don't have enough height on this side so i know i've got the angle correct here so i'll trim off a further section from the bottom and once again we're getting close just a small amount more and this is um what they suggest actually in the instruction is that you trim oversize the cuts or undersize the cuts to start with and then trim back the excess until you get to the point where it is correct um otherwise you have that potential of over, ma making too much of a cut and your your building hasn't got the right look to it so that's not too bad i have a slight gap here at the top and here at the top which what i'll do is i make a note of that before um cutting it onto the um the tile sheet uh in order that um i can make those allowances and hopefully that will work out better now if i turn it upside down i'm just going to run a line down that length there and I'm also going to run a line underneath. And in the instance of the line running down the gable, I'll cut it exactly as it is. And on this one here, we will cut it about two millimeters um, forward of this line. And I'm going to cut it with an, on the reverse side with the blade facing this way here to give me an angled cut. And what we're then left with is our template to which we can now transfer over onto the tiles and the reason for the angled cut here is that whenever i offer up to the building we have a nice straight edge here on which we can then attach our gutters or our guttering whenever we reach that stage and if i turn it over upside down hopefully you can see that there's just a nice Let's see if we can get an angle a nice overlap on this side hopefully you can just about see a nice overlap on this side as well now like i say i do need to make allowances for the slight gap here at the top but more or less i'm able to take this now and transfer it over onto my tile sheet now the tiles do work in one direction only and 
you, you can almost see it a step down each way so just make sure whenever you're taking your tiles that you do have it placed in the correct way with a lot of shaving and fettling i now have the front roof ready and on and it's just been held on with a little drop of masking tape i also have the rear uh, one complete as well you will see a little mark along here because of the extended angle at this point of the the building it did extend beyond one full sheet of the wills uh, tiles so i have had to uh, have a, a wee jig about and also the tiles are a very odd shape too but i'm not too concerned um really they shouldn't be running they shouldn't be running in that angle at all whatsoever um, but I don't want to waste another sheet in re uh, correcting that um, and as it's going to be right at the back of the scene it's not going to be um, visible so we'll, <laughs> we'll gloss over that you'll also see whenever I offer this up I'll just hold these into position with a bit of tape okay so you will notice that there is a glaring big gap in along the top of the the roof line and if we go back to the accessory packs that we have here um, you have two different types of um, roof cappings that you can add to your building and I have one of them trimmed off here and it's basically just a triangle strip or you can go with the rounded one and the idea being is that you will bridge that gap between front and rear um, sheet of tiles so I'm going to glue that into place now what I will then do is underneath I will add additional bits of support through off cuts of sheet um, in a triangular formation so I can lift the whole thing off and get the thing painted prior to uh, gluing it into position in addition to that i need to add a run of guttering along the front here we'll do the downspouts at the end but the guttering again comes in two options you have these ones here which have like a little strip of plastic and they can just be tucked in underneath to give a nice um, flat soffit board in underneath your uh, your building but i have opted for a very uh, short overhang on the the tiles much like many old buildings would have had so I will use the um, uh, the other option here which are individual ones now these need to be also used for the downspout so we need to be careful as to how many of these that we use along the front what I can also do is with a craft knife just run down the line of one of these here until this plastic strip comes away and then I can get that glued into place so I will crack on with that and get all these bits and pieces finished and um, the video is running along quite considerably now so I'm keen to complete this stage before we conclude the video entirely so I'll do this off screen and then we'll come back for one final recap okay so i have just finished up weathering or painting and weathering the roofs um, the guttering has been glued along that straight edge of the roof on each of the facing sides obviously i don't need to do the rear with it backing on to the um uh, the back scene uh, and just before i glue this one into place i just wanted to show you what was the meaning by the supports in underneath and it's it is literally just an, an, an off cut of the tiles um wedged in underneath there to keep the whole thing rigid this is ideal if you're wanting to make your roofs uh, removable in order that you can access lighting or that sort of thing but it's not something that will concern me so all i need to do is basically pop the thing into place and then i can glue it with some plastic weld and that will literally just be done from in underneath gluing along the the gable ends of it so we're more or less done i think for this video here next time we will look to finish everything off by installing the shop windows and adding the those little added details such as downspouts and that which will help enhance the entire build thanks for very much for watching and i'll talk to you again soon bye for now